Hi, Dr. Liu here to ask an important question. I find that many people who are beginning game designers, especially video game designers, role-playing game designers, are really more interested in writing fiction than they are in designing a game. And the immediate impetus for this question was the East Coast Game Conference 2014. There was lots of discussion of story and games. Ken Rolston, who was one of the keynote speakers, called himself a writer, not a game designer. He's known for uh, Morrowind and Oblivion. And I remember when Ken was a contributor to Alarms and Excursions, a Dungeons and Dragons fanzine a very long time ago. Mary DeMarle, the other key keynote speaker, talked about integrating story and game and showed us a spreadsheet where here's what's happening in the story and here's what's happening in the game put them in lockstep. In one of the sessions, Heather Albano discussed what amounted to using the same storyline to have three or four different results, depending on what the player chose to do at each point. Different results from the player's point of view. And that's all story and games, and yet, traditionally, games have not been about story. If we go back a hundred years or a thousand years, from the player's viewpoint, either the game can be uh, the equivalent of a story written by the game developers that the player is experiencing, or it can be a game that lets the player or players write their own story. Now, some writers, the game writers, clearly think they should decide how a game works and not the game designers. I'm a game designer, not a game writer, and so I think the game designer should decide how it works. But it depends on how important the story is. If the story is more important than the game, then maybe the game writer should decide. And of course, we have the three views of what games are. Games are all math, games are about people, and games are stories. And certainly if games are stories, or, or if this particular game is a story, then perhaps the writer should be paramount. Now, the question is, why are people playing the game? Do people play a game for the story or the gameplay? I'm firmly in the gameplay camp. I like the idea that games are about people. Stories don't last. Once you know the story, you'll rarely want to experience it again, unless it's a really good story. So, you, you experience a story and you're done. And that tends to happen with video games. People play them and then they're done. Contrast that with a game like My Game Britannia, it lasts four to five hours. I know people who have played it 500 times. 500 times. Clearly, it doesn't wear out. And that's because while there is history behind it, that's not the important thing. The important thing is the gameplay. Now, the smaller the game, the less room you're going to have for a story, unless you have one of these art games that have become popular that are more story than game, like Journey or Stanley Parable. Game designers invite emergence. They want players to create the narrative, the account of what happens. Game writers set up a story, perhaps a story with variations, for the player to follow. They're trying to impose what is essentially a passive experience, a story, consuming a story, let's say, on an interactive challenge, which is what tends to happen in games. And that's very challenging. This is not quite the same as a desire to control the players, which is common in puzzles and, and common in single player video games. Fiction writers often control the players, but they wish they didn't have to. So game designers like emergent behavior, behavior that was unanticipated, that they didn't intend, up to a point. I like emergent behavior where the players find their own objectives other than winning or beating the game to pursue. Uh, game designers don't like something that breaks the game, of course. And one reason why you playtest is to eliminate 
find those things that might break the game so you can change the game so they can't do that. Fiction writers, on the other hand, don't like emergent behavior because their objective is to control the story. So they don't want unanticipated or unintended things to occur. Now, some game formats encourage story more than others. AAA video games are often about an experience, which is more or less a story, engendering particular feelings in, in the players. Tabletop games are usually rules emergent. The game gives the players the opportunity to write their own narrative, or even, if it's really good, their own story. And that's also true for many casual video games. There's not a story imposed on the video game, casual video game, that amounts to anything. The bridge between video games and tabletop games is tabletop RPGs, which can be played either way. They can be played as a rules emergent game, or they can be played as an experience. And some tabletop RPGs encourage more one more than the other. The freeform ones, for example, are very story oriented. The ones with lots and lots of detailed rules can be like Fantasy Squad Leader, where you're clearly playing a war game. And there's everything in between. And the referee, if he's good or she's good, can push the game in one direction or the other regardless of what the rules are. Now, in general, my view is that all games are moving toward stories. Gen Con, which is a very large non-electronic game convention, although there are some electronic games there, is as much a story convention as a game convention now. This coming year, for example, the writers' symposiums pushed the game seminars out of the main hall because they're so popular. The question is, what do you want to do? Do you want to design games or do you want to tell stories? Because if you want to tell stories, there are many better ways to do it than games. And you have to recognize that for most games where the gameplay is what counts in the long run, because the gameplay is why people keep coming back, stories are going to be subordinate. And what you want in the story is not what's going to happen in the game.